Okay, in this video, we're going to be going over how to wire up relays um, for the Relay Lab. And I'm going to kind of be jumping back and forth between the breadboard and the actual lab. So make sure, um, please make sure you've read through this lab before you start. Uh, there's a lot to it, and especially the first two pages, there's a lot of really good information here. And if you just kind of rush through it and get to the part where you're actually working on the lab, you're going to miss some. So please read through it before you start on this, and then I'll walk you through the beginning part. So to start with, um, one of the things that's very important is that we need to use sockets for these relays. Um, if we don't, uh, the pins don't plug in very well. So this is the relay that we're going to be working with. Um, one thing that is a little bit confusing is that pin 1, this little notch here indicates pin the end that is pin 1. So this is actually pin 1 right here but the text is backwards. So I know that may seem a little bit confusing. So we're going to use an IC socket because if we plug these right into the breadboard like that, and you always want to make sure it's plugged in so it's straddling the strip here in the middle, um, the pins are too small and they tend to pop out and that really complicates the lab. So what we're going to do is take this part called an IC socket. These are special ones that have extra long pins on them. It's actually a machine socket. Um, and so what you can do is push the relay in like that. So it's seated really well. And then you're going to plug that into the breadboard and it should make a really good connection on there. So the next thing we want to take a look at, if we take a look at the data sheet, um, is this pinout, the relay pinout here. And pin one is the bottom left corner and then it goes two three four five six seven and eight kind of in a kind of in a circle here and this is actually very common for these kinds of components that they're the numbering kind of goes in a loop there now what I would recommend when you're doing this lab um, because we're going to be making a lot of connections to the pins as shown here um, to actually write the numbers on the package um, or you can use a piece of tape which I'm going to do so that we can keep track of where the pins are. It makes a little bit, it a little bit easier. The pins are spaced out a little funky, so you just got to make sure when you're doing these labs that when you're plugging a wire into the breadboard, it's actually making connections with the pins. Okay, so I've got my relay labeled there. Writing isn't the best, but I can at least see what the pins are. And there's a little bit of parallax with this um, setup I have with a camera. So it's offset a little bit. I'll try to see if I can correct that a little bit so that it's not confusing when you see how I have these plugged in here. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So you're looking straight down on it. So as I mentioned in the video, the coil connections are pins 1 and 8. And if we take a look here, for example, on the um, data sheet here, it doesn't really say whether which one is positive or negative. It doesn't really matter in this case. Sometimes they are polarized. But we're going to connect pin 1, in this case, um, to ground, which is right there. And we're going to take pin 8. I should really do it this way. Black is usually used for ground. So I'm going to go pin 1 to ground. And then I'm going to connect pin 8 to the positive voltage. Whoops, off 1. There we go. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this in the video or not, but when you when I'm making this electrical connection here, you can hear this little click um, that is uh, you're actually hearing the coil activate the, the armature and the armature is pulling in. That's what's making that sound. And I would suggest doing that, just wire up this really basic circuit just to test it and make sure that it's working. Um, and eventually we'll be using, we'll be kind of expanding this breadboard using a lot of space on it. But for now, you could use the shorter breadboard. I like to use the larger ones just because I like extra space. Um, but this will give you enough uh, room to work on the, the lab. So I'm going to kind of walk you through uh, the very first part of the first lab so you understand how this works. So part one here, relay pin functions, that's going to be based on the previous page here looking at the different contacts and the coils. So you're going to fill in for each pin on the relay, okay, um, what those different connections are, whether they're the normally closed contact, 
um, or the coil pins um, on the relay. Now, if you take a look at this schematic here for the first circuit, um, we've got two parts. We have the power supply is set up for five volts, and we're going through a normally open push button switch, switches that you were working on last week, through the relay coil, and then back to the ground, the minus side of the five volt supply. So that if we push this push button switch here, if we close the switch, it will activate the coil. Now over on the right is um, uh, another circuit, but it's related to the first circuit because if you take a look, we've got K1 here and K1 here. These two parts are a single relay. They're just parts of um, the relay, but they're shown in different locations on the schematic. And this is actually fairly common with relay circuits. Now in this case, um, rather than use different supply voltages, I'm using, we're still using a five volt supply here, but we're going through the normally open contacts on the relay, pins two and four, to an LED, through the resistor and back to the ground. The point of this circuit is to first of all, make sure that you can wire it up and understand how to wire the relay. But the second part is to understand something else that's very important. This, the left side of the circuit is the control side. That's what's activating the coil. The other side is the output or the power side. This could just as easily turn on a 120 volt fan, light bulb, motor, because these contacts can actually handle a couple amps at a very high voltage. But the two circuits are completely isolated electrically. And that's one of the significant parts of relays um, or the uses or applications of relays. So let me go, I'm gonna pause this and then I'm gonna go ahead and wire up the next part of the circuit. Okay, so we're gonna wire up the control side. So what I'm gonna do is take a jumper from the five volt supply. I'm gonna plug in a push button switch here. And again, always remember when you're putting in the push button switches, they have to go side to side. If you put them in um, vertically, they won't connect, they'll short out. So I'm gonna wire up the switch like that. I'm going to take another wire, go from the switch to the top pin 8 of the coil on the relay, like that. And then I'm going to go from 1, pin 1, down to ground. Now I'd recommend on these breadboards, first of all, if, if they do not have the little... Um, connections. If you've got a break in your red and the blue buses, the power buses, make sure to connect those. And I would also jumper them from one side to the other to make sure they're connected. Okay, so what we've done here is wired up this first part of the circuit here on the left. The 5 volts is going to the switch to the relay coil back to ground. Now I think I have 1 and 8 swapped on mine. Sorry, I think I've got pins 1 and 8 swapped, but that will still work fine. Um, so now when I press the button, again, I don't know if the microphone's going to pick that up or not, but you can hear it clicking. And that's what you always want to do when you're first building these circuits is to test them and make sure that you can hear something change when you're pushing the button. Now, the other thing I'd highly recommend you do is as you're making these connections to print this out and make a mark a little line here. Um, you could use a highlighter or you can make a pen, use a pen to mark the connection as you go through the circuit. Um, if you just start wiring a circuit and you're not keeping track of what you've done, it's easy to make mistakes. Okay, now we're gonna wire the next side of the circuit. That's the input and it's working okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wire up the second part of the circuit. It's a little trickier, but not too hard. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and wire up this output now. I kinda did it all here quickly just to test it. But let me go through the process here. So the output um, of the relay is pin four. I'm gonna take an LED, make sure that we have the positive side, the longer lead connected on the left. That's gonna go into pin four on the relay. And the other side, it doesn't really matter where it's going at this point. Then we're gonna connect a resistor in series with it to ground like this. And the only other thing we need to connect then is the power, the five volts coming in. 
So we got to make sure, and this is where it's a little tricky to make sure you're lined up with the proper pins here. I'm going to plug this into what I think is pin two, hopefully. I think that's it right there. There we go. So we've got the control side on the left, and on the right is the output part of the circuit. So the five volts is going through um, from into pin two, out pin four, through the LED to ground. And again, if I press that, you can hear it click and see the LED come on. Okay, so let's take a look at the other circuits in this lab here. Um, sorry, my video is cutting out a little bit. Let me reset this. Okay, there we go. So for that circuit one, for circuit two, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we're still having the power connected to the normally open switch going to pin one. But pin eight of the relay is going to go through a couple of contact pins on the same relay. Seems a little weird. What this does basically is that if you if you push the switch, the coil, the current flows through the coil through the normally closed contact back to ground. Um, and that engages the relay. But what happens is immediately the circuit opens up because it's normally closed contact going to normally open and the relay turns off and it goes back and forth at a very, very fast rate. So when you run this, you'll hear something kind of unusual when you press the button because the LED is only turning on for a very, very short period of time, or you're probably going to see that it's it doesn't come on or it looks like it's not lit at all. Um, and that's because it's switching on and off at such a fast rate. If you remember from the data sheet, that's happening on the order of milliseconds where it's turning on and turning off. What's important again to understand, though, is that all of these pins, pin 1 and 8, 2 and 3, 5 and 7, they're all the same relay. Um, even though it's located in different parts on the schematic. And the way we know that for sure is that you see K1 here, K1, K1. That represents that it's the same relay you're connecting in the circuit. Now, in the next part of the lab, it's a little bit, um, we're adding a little bit to the circuit. We're going to add the normally closed switch. That switch is the um, larger switch. It's brown colored. Um, and the right side of the circuit will be the same, so you won't need to change that. But in this case, we've got the five volts connected to the normally closed switch. The other side is going to go to two places. It's going to go to the normally open switch and to pin two on the relay. Now, pin four on the relay is connected to the other side of the switch, but also connected to pin one on the coil. And then finally, eight is going back to ground. And again, if you switch one and eight, it's not going to change how it works. Um, this circuit's a little more complicated. I'll go over it in the lecture. Um, probably next week when we talk about motor control for relay circuits. Um, but in the meantime, please work through these labs. If you get stuck on anything, feel free to drop in during office hours or send me an email. Um, and then make sure at the end to answer all these questions with a short what you learned part of the lab and upload that. So good luck with it. If you have any uh, problems, again, let me know.